Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Noble News here at the Noble Way, our weekly recap of all the greatest news, greatest hits of things that you're going to want to know about that are happening in the Orlando area. We even have something from the Tampa area today. So stay tuned. There's a lot of really exciting new announcements that have just happened. First things first, we've got something in the Tampa area, which is only about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hour drive, depending on how fast or slow you drive, uh, from the Orlando area. So if you're in the Orlando area for Disney or Universal, um, or maybe you live in this area, there are some really cool things that are happening in the Tampa Bay area. A lot of people like to take a trip over to Clearwater um, headed to the beach, even when they're on a Disney vacation, or maybe they, they, they double up and do a week in Disney, uh, and then a week in Clearwater or somewhere at the beach. So if you're headed over to Clearwater or Tampa, and you're going to be here between January 29th and March 13th, there is an exciting event that's happening for two months, a two-month long event, and it's called the Gasparilla Season. Um, and it's a it's an entire two month long period of time where it's all about piracy and pirates and all these cool fun festival events and things like that. And the event is named after a pirate that's called his name was Jose Gasparilla, uh, and apparently he sort of terrorized the seas. Uh, in the 18th century, around Florida, the coast of Florida, Tampa area. I don't know why they're cel why they celebrate I, I that because the he terrorized <laughs> Florida I was like, uh, as a pirate. Yeah. Um, but 18th and early 19th century, I think, was was his claim to fame. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of people just are fascinated with the piracy yeah. era and pirates. Um, so I just think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of festivals, entertainment. It's, it lasts for two months. Some of them have actually um, ticketed events. Mm -hmm. You can do reservations and things. So check online. Just look up Gasparilla Season or Jose Gasparilla in Tampa um, online. And you'll be able to find all sorts of information about all the cool events, festivities that are happening. So there are road races. There's art, festivals. Um, and there's also, this is the, it has the nation's third largest parade. Yeah. I don't know, third largest parade. I mean, there's some pretty big parades out there. I don't know <laughs> third largest, but I don't know what it is. So check it out. Um, March, uh, so it's January 29th through March 13th. Good news, the Hogwarts Express is back open. Um, that's very exciting if you don't want to have to walk in between the parks. Um, it was closed uh, for about a week with no reopening date, and but it's already reopened. It was only down for a week. Yeah. And it was closed because of a pool cable. I don't even know what that means, yeah. well, but that's why it was closed. It's because it's not a real train. So it's, <laughs> it's not a train that actually runs. It's, it's on a cable system. Oh. So if you think of like a tug of war, like a rope, it just pulls the train. Mm. And I think the maybe the cord... Something snapped happened. or broke or maybe it was fraying. I don't know. Something was wrong with the pool cord. Um, so it was open last night when we were there. Yeah. So we were there last night for Rock the Universe, uh, which was a lot of fun, a lot of good music. And it was open. And we were like, hmm, it's open. So we should probably mention that it's open. In other news at Disney, uh, the, the classic, legendary, iconic purple signs are I being know. replaced. I'm not happy about that. With um, just sort of like more Navy traditional blue, blue signs. signs. Yeah. Um, I mean, most road signs are, most not, road signs are blue, green, but, you know, yeah. but there are blue signs too. So they're still a little bit different, but. They're not purple. There was just something about the purple signs that to me, I felt like as soon as you, like you knew you were in the Disney like bubble, quote unquote, mm -hmm. when you sort of like saw all the purple signs. When I lived in Ohio um, and we only came here like a couple times a year only. I, I, that's a lot, but um, I would have dreams like of us pulling in and being like the purple sign. So it's definitely <laughs> something that is meaningful. Is you yeah. know you just knew you were in Disney. I saw the new signs. I don't honestly don't love them as much. I don't think they stand out as much. I think mm -hmm. they kind of blend in with the yeah. sky because um, sky's always blue in Florida. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't love them. I don't. Yeah. I mean, they're they're fine, but. They're definitely not the purple signs with the red. Nope. Um, and I don't know. I, I feel like if they wanted to refresh them, um, they could have just refreshed them like a different, slightly different purple or something and made them like a like slightly better, like a different font or something on the signs. But I guess the blue signs are, you know, 50th anniversary sort of themed and everything. But um, I don't know. I just feel like if they were going to be spending money on stuff, 
at Disney to improve the parks or add rides or do anything. That's probably not what I would have spent the money on. <laughs> I don't Just know. Just our opinion. Yeah. I don't know. So tell us what you think. Do you like the new blue signs? Do you not like the new blue signs? Um, do you miss the purple signs? Will you miss the purple signs? I'm going to miss them. That's all there is to it. It's not a big deal, though. I'm not like going out there no. and complaining and, no. you know, it's not going to change my mind about coming to Disney <laughs> and I'm not going to be like, oh, no, I don't want to stay in the Disney bubble because the signs are blue. But it's just another thing that, you know, it's how it is with Disney. Disney fans don't like change. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we kind of get all excited when something small changes because it's you have that thing. It's like in your head. You have this experience in your mind. And when that experience changes, you're, it takes you a little while to wrap your head around it. But then sometimes the experience ends up being better. You just have to kind of get over that hump. So, yeah. I don't know. Tell us what you think. Do you like the new blue signs or do you miss the pur well, you miss the purple signs? If you have a reservation for the new Star Wars hotel, which I never know the name of it. Well, I think it's the Halcyon is the name of the, no the ship. No wonder I don't know what it is. It's the house. The Halcyon is the name of the ship for the hotel that you're supposedly like docking onto the ship, and then your whole experience is on that ship. But I don't, I don't know what the hotel. I, I think the, the it, hotel is named Halcyon, but I don't. Yeah. It's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Hotel. Yeah, that's what I keep seeing as Star Wars Galaxy Edge <laughs> yeah. Hotel. I don't know that anybody knows that word you just said. Actually, there's yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, there. If you have a reservation for it, you can see a full itinerary for your um, your visit on the app so if you log in um you can see your full itinerary I, just like we couldn't go see somebody's itinerary because we don't have a reservation so you do have to have a reservation to be able to see it but that's exciting you get to see like what you're going to do for your upcoming visit we're just not going to cover it all in this video because it would it would take 10 minutes because yeah. there's like a lot of stuff on the on the two-day itinerary and some people um, might want to be surprised too i think i would want to be surprised i yeah. might look at like no i would want to be surprised yeah I think. <laughs> um, there, there, I mean, there's, a, there, there's some interesting things like lightsaber training and, and the, um, the card game, like training, like have, like mm -hmm. you can do the card games and food and stuff like that. Sabak, the Sabak card game is what I'm talking about. So there's a lot of things. And then I think, you know, going back and forth into star into, uh, Galaxy. Batu, which is Galaxy's Edge, you know, uh, the transport. Now they did show the, 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 the truck. Now it's speculation because there's not been any announcements, but they, there's been like a, a secret photo of a truck. Um, that's because the transportation that's going to take you back and forth between the hotel and the uh, and the theme park in Batu, in all of the concept art, it was it was like a bus. It was like it was like a kind of like a tour bus, like a mm -hmm. fancy tour bus looking thing with like inside all this cool stuff. And then somebody caught like a a snapshot of the of a truck that they are uh, they are assuming is the transport, mm -hmm. and it's just like a. It looks kind of just like a busted box truck, like 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 that hauls like freight. Um, so people are like outraged and saying that's just another thing that they cut money, you know, out of the budget and they're 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 cutting corners. But like honestly, it doesn't really matter what it, what the truck is on the outside. It's about I'm like sure what does it look like inside. on the inside. So, so. until that, yeah, that one I'm going to reserve judgment until <laughs> we see like what's actually in the truck and is that even the truck? I don't right. know. Um, we don't know. So. Um, but interesting. Now, the cool thing about staying at the, I think one of the biggest benefits to staying at Galaxy's Edge is not only the immersion that you get, but also the, um, you get access to Rise of the Resistance without having to like, you know, pay extra money and you get, you get to ride it. So you get to ride all the Star Wars rides. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and then they did also announce that there will be transportation available from the Galaxy's Edge Hotel to Disney Springs. So if you are wanting to actually go on a shopping excursion, at Disney Springs or mm. back or, or whatever, or maybe you just need transport. Like maybe you arrive or maybe you need to transfer to a different hotel. Like you're, cause it's only a two night stay. They will have that available. Um, I personally don't know that I would want to go to Disney Springs mm. during a two day period. If I spent no. that much money on an immersive experience no. where if like you don't want to leave star some Wars, but some people might, so it will be available. A couple of more controversial uh, things that are going. There's a lot of controversial things happening <laughs> this week. This is one after the other. Um, we've got the new updated look for Minnie Mouse for Disneyland Paris mm -hmm. for for the um, in honor of Women's History Month. They designed is in March. which is in March. They've yeah. designed a new outfit for Minnie Mouse, and I think there's been a lot of outrage um, out there because I think people may be misunderstanding what that is all about. And I think that um, Minnie Mouse has had multiple, multiple outfits mm -hmm. over the years. I mean, if you see her on the cruises, on, I mean, all even sorts of different things, it. even the praise, she yeah. has different outfits. I even saw a, a, a video um, highlighting a lot of the new 
outfits that all the different characters are going to have during this uh, celebration because it's a 30th, cele 30th year celebration for Disneyland Paris. Um, and they have a lot of new outfits and Minnie Mouse was in this like really sparkly um, like rainbow colored dress and everything. But yeah. for this particular announcement, um, I think people were thinking, oh, oh, you know, they're changing Minnie Mouse's look to be in this sort of like pantsuit. It's like a blue and black polka, dot. uh, polka dotted pantsuit, uh, a symbol of progress for a new generation. So it's just it's just another outfit that she wears because, uh, I mean, women wear all sorts of different outfits. Lots of mm -hmm. women wear pantsuits, some wear dresses, uh, some wear tracksuits. It doesn't matter. Everyone wears. So why not have different options? Um, now, there's been the biggest the biggest complaint I've heard, though, is. People think it looks like she's wearing pajamas. I mean, it does kind of look like pajamas, but that's not what it's going to look like on her. Obviously. Yeah, it might, yeah, I don't know. It, it might all be sequins. Yeah. Who knows? I bet yeah. some of the polka dots are sequins. I have no idea. I'm yeah. just making that up, but that is my guess. Yeah, on the artwork, it does. <laughs> it's not going to look like Like, after graphic. somebody said, like, it kind of looks like pajamas, I was like, it does kind of look like pajamas. But... I didn't really think about it, but then I was like, it does. But it's still cute. Uh, but again, uh, it's just another piece of controversy. So if you've been reading a lot and you're thinking, oh no, D you know, Disney's changing the way Minnie looks. No, they're not. Like she's, she's still going to have lots of different outfits. She's still going to have her dress and her little yellow shoes and sometimes and sometimes different outfits. This is just another outfit and this is in celebration and it's going to be for about a month in Disneyland Paris. So again, controversy, but not really... <laughs> Not really controversy. Kind of, just yeah. yeah. Again, as I said, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna have to say it a lot. Disney fans don't like change. Anytime something changes, it's like ah. Um, so, anyhow, there you go. The Frontierland Hoedown is returning February 11th. I have never seen it. <laughs> and I didn't even know what it was. It's not on the schedule because they like it to be a surprise. It's like a flash mob kind of thing. And so the characters and cast members come from, like, different areas all of a sudden. I mean... Yeah, I'm going to be part of that. I know. And um, they come from, like, different... All of a sudden it happens. So it's a surprise hmm. every time it happens. So that's super exciting. Yeah. I hope I'm there sometime when it's there. Cause, and you don't know when to go. You just have to get lucky, I guess. But it has uh, all, like, the Splash Mountain characters, like Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, Br'er Fox, mm -hmm. um, Claire Bell Cow, the Country hmm. Bear, Jamboree Bear, Horace Horse Collar. So um, it's some of the different characters that you don't see very often. So it sounds really yeah. fun. Like, I hope I get to be there. One it sounds fun. I never even heard of it. Yeah. I didn't know it even existed. Maybe I did in like the crevice of my I mind when I was I a kid, but I, I feel like I've never heard or seen this before. <laughs> and another piece of controversial news. Not really that controversial, but it's funny because um, Tom Sawyer's Island on the rafts. Uh, so there's rafts that take you over to Tom Sawyer's Island. It's funny because when we had not been to Tom Sawyer Island in so long, we did a video of it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. To talk, like we did the whole video of Tom Sawyer Island. It's actually really cool if you've never gone over there or maybe you haven't been there for a while. Go over there. But it had been so long since we got we went there. We were like, okay, let's head over to Tom Sawyer Island. So we got on the ferry because we we're like the ferry. Like you get on the ferry. That's what takes you over there. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that's like 30 minutes of my life I'll never get back don't get on the ferry to get to Tom Sawyer's the ferry is not my favorite thing it's very slow <laughs> uh, I mean you get to see kind of like cool I things like it. Thunder Mountain from the backside and there's a little bit of stuff to look at but it's like it's pretty slow it's relaxing um <laughs> whatever but anyway uh, so we got on the ferry by mistake and then later we were like oh that's definitely not it because here we are we're and we, and we and we realized there's the little raft thing over by Thunder Mountain that takes you across so we went over there and we got on the raft and the raft we were on was named Engine Joe. And that was like the, there was like a nameplate of the raft. And I was like, I looked at that Engine Joe ra uh, nameplate and I was like, I'm surprised that they still have this nameplate. Cause isn't that kind of like a, that's like a controversial thing right now in culture right now in America. So I was like, I was like, I bet they removed this sign pretty soon i bet they changed the engine joe and then there's another place on the island that says engine joe and there's also an uh, engine joe cavern mm -hmm. uh, so there's the engine joe nameplate on the raft and then there's engine joe cavern and i was like i i bet they i bet they replaced this like i have a feeling like i'm surprised that's still here i bet they're gonna get rid of it and sure enough they just announced it's gone they just got rid of it they painted over it uh so no more engine joes but i thought that was so funny because i totally was <laughs> As soon as I saw that email, I saw that so that notification, I sent it to her. I was like, I called it. I totally called it. So they anyway. Did, they did replace the other names on the rafts as well. It wasn't just Engine Joe. It was all yeah. the names. They painted over all of them. So yeah. right now there's no names. So I said it was funny. They got rid of it. Yeah. But of course, that's controversial, you know, because yeah. 
change. Every time there's change, people are like, oh. Um, but anyhow, just thought that was funny. Not, it's not really that interesting of news that Injun Joe's name is gone or whatever, but it was more interesting that I called it. <laughs> so annoying. The Festival of Fantasy Parade returns March 9th. So that's exciting. Yay! But there's also... With the big dragon that yeah. breathes fire. <sighs> so not only is the Hoedown um, debuting on February 11th, the Adventureland Cavalcade is debuting on February 11th. And it is... It's a new cavalcade, yeah, right? Yeah. This is a new cavalcade. Yeah. Never been done before. Yeah. And it has more characters in it than any of the other cavalcades. Um, I think there's a new song in it. They're gonna, It's going to be celebrating the 50th. Well, that's cool. A brand yeah. new parade. Uh, I mean, cavalcade. cavalcade. Now, and it says the, the most characters of any cavalcade. So it's not a parade. So there's probably parades that have more characters. Oh, yeah. But cavalcade. But the princess cavalcade has a lot of characters yeah, in so it. it so it has even more than that. It must have a lot yep. of, of characters. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. So we got a festival of fantasy parade coming mm -hmm. back. We've got the Adventureland Cavalcade, brand new, and we have the Adventureland Hoedown, Frontierland or whatever, Frontier Hoedown. But oh, Frontier Hoedown, not Adventureland, Frontierland Hoedown. Yeah. So but that's cool. Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair stage show is um, going to, I, I would say returning, but it's, it's actually a new version of the other friendship fair that Mickey had on the stage in front of the castle. It's February 25th. I've been waiting for the stage shows to come back, folks. i got to be honest. I've been waiting for Mickey Mouse to show back up mm -hmm. on the stage in front of the castle. I think that's that's the thing I miss the most. Even though we don't watch it very often, there's just something about when you come into the park, if you come in like when it's going yeah. on or you're walking around you see it, it's just so magical. So that's exciting. And it does have um, different segments than the old. Let me see what it was called. Yeah, the old one was called Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, and this one has different segments from that one and a new song, and um, they're going to be celebrating the 50th. We are getting close to the opening of Icebreaker. I am excited mm -hmm. at SeaWorld. We talked about it last week about all the updates and things they've been making, and I forgot to mention, duh, I was saying they're getting ready for something big, they're getting ready for stuff, they're repainting everything, they changed the sign. And then I was like, they're getting ready for something. And I kept, for, and I forgot to mention Icebreaker. Hello, February 18th. Um, so a couple of weeks out, we're getting very close to the brand new uh, opening of the Icebreaker roller coaster that is going to be, um, it launches, it goes forward and backward. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know how to think about that roller coaster because I haven't seen the design of it and how it works. Um, but I, I hope they've made improvements to the forward slash backward roller coaster because We've been on forward, backwards roller coasters like that before. Um, obviously, things like, you know, obviously, like, um, obviously, Expedition Everest goes forwards and backwards, and that works fine. But we had a ride called Face Off at Kings Island in Cincinnati, and it was a ride that, like, you, you, it, it went forward, and then it went backwards, and then you got off in the same place. And so it was so slow to load and unload and like load ride, and though. unload. It's a fun ride. But like if there was like 10 people in line, it still took you like 20 minutes to get on the ride because it was so slow to load and unload. So I'm hoping it's not like that. Because if it is, I'm not going to be a fan of that ride. But if it's not, if it's like it goes forward and then backwards and has like different loading zones and I don't know how they do all that, then it's going to be pretty cool either way it's exciting because it's a brand new roller coaster and it and it's pretty fast from what i hear it's a launch coaster i think it has a forward and a backwards launch not just like you know like uh, doesn't do like just this so that's cool that's exciting i have seen some other folks who have already done some sneak peek rides on it um there's some video footage out there but i don't like to be spoiled yeah um, i like to be surprised yeah so i'm gonna we're Definitely. gonna wait um but it opens February 18th at SeaWorld. We'll try to get video there. We are going to be there on opening day, I think. Um, and we'll definitely report on it. And we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what we think. But February 18th, get your SeaWorld passes now so you can be first in line. Universal has announced uh, Epic Universe is opening summer 2025. It's official, That's apparently. a really long time. It's official until they change it. <laughs> right. They, it, well, and they say because they announced it in 2019, but then because of... 2020 and everything that happened in that yeah. year, obviously all the work got put on hold. Um, so they're saying that's why it's taking so long. But man, 2025 25. seems like a long, long time. time. Three years away. 
It's but a long time. I'm excited for Epic Universe. I really am. Yeah, it's, I am too. Now it's not right next to the two existing parks, yeah. so it will not be connected, which is a little bit of a downer, uh, because of the fact that it's not like in an immerse, like all one big immersive universal area that's all connected. It's actually going to be like about, I think it's like a ten minute, five or ten minute drive away from Universal where it will actually be physically located, because mm -hmm. um, I guess there's just no land left around there, so they had to open. They had to add it somewhere else which is why Disney was so smart buying up all that property all that land under fake names back in the day because they knew if they bought the land and they people knew it was Disney buying the land they would have raised the prices so they were smart and did it under a bunch of like fake holding company names or whatever different names um, and they bought all these pieces of land over time and got this huge huge amount of acreage so then they could create this unit this world that nobody could really encroach on um, Universal didn't quite do that, obviously. <laughs> no. So um, it has been built up all around. There's no space. So they ended up having to buy a piece of land somewhere else. Um, but I'm excited for it to open yeah. because it has, it's going to have another Wizarding World, um, Harry Potter, Hopefully Fantastic a Beasts. Pokemon Stadium. There's going to be some sort of Nintendo World, I think, <laughs> part of it. I don't know if that's going to be there. My son always talks like maybe that little building over there is going to be the Pokemon Stadium. Yeah. We hope, but we don't know. But I think there's like a Monsters uh, area, <laughs> yeah. uh, sort of the universe of Monsters. Um, a bunch of stuff. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Uh, I can't wait for it to open 2025, three years. Hopefully COVID will be over by then. I mean, literally, like, is it ever going to end? All right. So that's the news for this week. So many things. This was like a long episode. There were so many things to get through. It was like, yeah. boom, boom, boom. There was a lot of new stuff. So a lot of exciting things happening at all the parks around here, all the uh, festivals, things going on. Don't forget that the Festival of the Arts is still going on right now at Epcot. Don't forget to head over there, get your ticket. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of awesome food and art. So until next time, thanks for joining us. The noble way is the easy way. Bye-bye, everybody.